So I'm using this word bryophyte. What does it mean to be a bryophyte? Well, bryophytes are non-vascular plants, meaning they lack conductive tissue. So we have mosses, liverworts, and hornworts. And as a group, they are based more on what they lack than what they have in common. Now because of that lack of conductive tissue, they are constrained to smaller sizes than most vascular plants. Now that being said, they are a diverse group with mosses alone having more than 10,000 species in 700 genera. So in this picture we have a moss, and then we have liverworts. This is a thallus liverwort, meaning the plant body is this flattened structure. And there are also leafy liverworts, which can be easily confused with a moss, but the leaves lie in a single plane, as opposed to a moss with the leaves that go all the way around the stem. And finally, we have hornworts. This is Anthoceros. It will be the only hornwort pictured in this guide. So this will be primarily of mosses and a few species of liverworts. Now, there are also organisms that are easily confused with bryophytes, for example, lichens. Lichens are an association between an algae and a fungi, ecologically similar, growing on trees and rocks in the same way bryophytes do. And then we have Selaginella, which occurs on rocky outcrops but is a vascular plant. And so what you are seeing here is the sporophyte. So where do bryophytes fit in in terms of their evolutionary relationships with other land plants? They are true plants and they share a common ancestor with other land plants. Now we have liverworts coming off first, followed by hornworts, and finally mosses. So they are some of the earliest forms of land plants with a gametophyte dominant life cycle and again a lack of specialized conductive tissue. And breaking off next, we have lycophytes, which includes Selaginella. And from here on out, we have vascular tissue in plants and a sporophyte dominant life cycle. And then we have the group that includes ferns, followed by the gymnosperms, and that brings the evolution of seeds and pollen. And finally, angiosperms. And this makes up most of the vegetation you see when you look out on the landscape. And they have evolved the traits of flowers and fruits. Now let's introduce some basic terminology on the structure in moss. So we have the sporophyte, this is the upper structure, it's composed of the capsule, this contains the spores, and there can be a lid or cap to the capsule that is called the operculum, and sometimes covering over the capsule you have a woolly or papery structure that is called the calyptra. It's actually part of the gametophyte. It, it is a remnant of the gametophyte and it protects the growing sporophyte. And then finally we have the seta which elevates the capsule. Alright, and then the lower structure is the gametophyte. This is the dominant photosynthetic portion. It has leaves, stems, and rhizoids. Alright, so let's focus specifically on the sporophyte. We see that the sporophytes of different species look different. So let's just take a moment and appreciate some of the different forms. Okay, the gametophyte. So right away we can group the gametophyte into one of two groups, either acrocarpus or pleurocarpus. And in an acrocarpus moss, you have straight and unbranched stems. And the sporophytes grow out of the tip of the stem, and that is opposed to a pleurocarpus moss, which has highly branched and clingy stems, and the branches adhere to the surface of the rock or the wood lying flat, the sporophytes grow out of a specialized lateral branch. 
and we have the basal rosette. This is a growth form. Uh, it's usually a cluster of leaves. They radiate from a common point, but they're often low to the ground, just above the substrate, so you do not have an elongate stem. Now a stem that is julaceous, you would have a tight rounded stem with leaves that cling against the stem. It gives the stems a very tight and rounded appearance, as in the case with Sclerapodium. The leaf. So mosses come in many different forms and their leaves do as well. Okay, hair points, ons, and hyaline ons. So a leaf may have projections at the tip, and they can be clear or whitish, and that is hyaline. And give a very characteristic overall appearance to the moss. And then we can see here in an illustration, uh, as opposed to a leaf that extends to a point, as in the picture on the right. The leaves can have a toothed margin, for example, in Plagionium, we can see that the toothing on close-up, that would be opposed to a relative of Plagionium, which has a smooth border. This is Rhizonium. We can also have a leaf with a saw-like edge, and that would be termed serrate. 